In this video, we will be going over the basics of creating a very simple geometry in Grasshopper. And the first thing that I want to show you is how to create points. So our points and all the components that are necessary to create points are located under the vector tab up here. And here we see our um, components for points. And I will choose the construct point component and place it on the canvas. You can also enter construct point um, after double clicking on the canvas and add the component here. And now we have our component. Currently both uh, all of the inputs, the x, y and z coordinates are all set to zero. And you can see this very small uh, cross as a preview in Rhino. So we want to uh, change the values for these inputs and for that I will use a slider. Our slider will be found under the params tab um, under the input section and there we have our uh, number slider um, component that we can set and now we can add a number slider to our x component. Um, if you slide the number slider you will notice that the number slider only goes from 0 to 1 and so our uh, point in our Rhino preview also only goes from uh, 0 to 1 but of course we often want to to have a, a much larger range of values and to change this we can double click on our number slider and this uh, window pops up and here we can make a few settings um, that change the behavior of our number slider. The most important one, of course, is the minimum and maximum. So, for example, I can say on my uh, maximum would be 100. I will need to um, accept by clicking the green check mark. And um, I could also set, for example, how many um, how many decimals I would have if I would be using um, yeah, rational numbers. I can also only use whole numbers. Um, so, in that case, we would not have any um, any decimal points of our numbers or even in odd numbers, but for now we let's uh, we, we, we only use rational numbers uh, with two decimals. And we're going from 0 to 100. And now we can change the position of our point um, by changing this slider. I will simply copy and paste this slider. And now it's important to copy and paste because if I were to, to add a new number slider, I would need to uh, make the, the same changes again. So um, it's advisable to just create the number slider once and then copy and paste it. There's also an easier way or a quicker way of creating number sliders that have a specific, um, a specific uh, range. And that is by double clicking onto the canvas and then simply typing my range. So for example, I want a number slider from 0 to 100 and I can go 0 and then I do the um, smaller sign and then I go to 100 um, and this creates a number slider that goes from 0 uh, that goes from 0 to 100 in whole numbers if I wanted to have uh, decimal points I can go um, 0 smaller than 100 point zero zero for example and now I have the yeah a similar slider but uh, um, with a floating point number with two decimal points. So that's a, a very quick way of creating number sliders that are yeah, quicker um, than adding a number slider, just the, the default number slider, double clicking, changing all the values and um, accepting it. So now we have our uh, point and I can change these, uh, these different values to uh, change the coordinates of the point that I've created. There are other ways of creating points um, and um, I will show that right now I could for example simply create a panel and add the coordinates that I want the, the point to have just inside of the panel. So for example I would want to have a point at 100 comma 50 comma 50 and now I have my panel with these values. However, to create a point from it, I will need a point param. And a param, which is uh, all of these uh, components that you can find under the uh, params tab in the top left, 
um, they don't really create geometry, but they are just used as basically um, um, as containers for our values. And in this case, um, uh, my input gets converted to a point. Um, if I had a different input that might not look like a point, for example, if I if I create a, a panel that just says 100, I can also um, convert this, uh, sorry, I can't convert this to a point because the, the data does not correspond with the type of um, data that would be necessary to create a point. But if I have a panel with the, the right data, in this case, three numbers separated by commas, um, it creates a valid point. Um, and these params are quite quite useful and we will use them uh, quite extensively, mostly to keep our um, grasshopper definitions as clean and as um, uh, organized as possible. Um, and this has multiple benefits that I will show you uh, in just a bit. Another way we can uh, create points is to, to skip the panel altogether and simply double click and then add our uh, uh, add our coordinates directly by typing 100 comma 50 comma 50 and that way we get uh, this point and if you have um, activated the gumballs under the display settings you will even have um, a way of changing that point in Rhino. So this can be very useful if you if you need a point that um, yeah you just want to change manually, just maybe something for testing that is not dependent on specific um, coordinates, but that you just um, need as a preview or as something that you that you can quickly change by selecting the param and then uh, dragging in um, in the Rhino viewport. But this only works if we created the point um, in this manner by double clicking and adding coordinates directly. This won't work for any of the points that we've created with, the, uh, with other methods. Just as a quick reminder, we can uh, change the way our preview works with uh, this option in the top right. Right now I have a uh, selection preview activated, so only points that I select in Grasshopper will get displayed in the Rhino canvas and uh, the Rhino preview. However, if I deselect this option, then all of my points will be displayed at once. Now, another um, uh, simple geometry that we can create is a rectangle. And we can find this under curve primitive. And there we have multiple ways of creating rectangles. For example, a rectangle made up uh, made out of two points and I will quickly uh, delete these points here and simply copy the construct points that I created before and then create a rectangle, two point rectangle here and use my two points that I created as my input point A and uh, point B. Of course right now because these points are uh, basically um, both at the same location, there won't be any rectangle, but as soon as I, I uh, change their values, you can see uh, the rectangle, the green rectangle here, um, changing its size. And right now it's, it's basically ignoring the height of um, the points, simply because uh, yeah, the rectangle of course only exists in a certain plane and this plane is also defined here. How to define planes? Uh, explained in the following video. But this is one way of creating a rectangle. So to simply use uh, two points and to um, uh, change their values and basically yeah, have them as the, the, uh, the outermost corners of a rectangle. Now there's another way of creating a rectangle or there's even more than two ways. There's uh, quite many ways of creating rectangles. But um, the one that I want to show you right now is the rectangle that uses um, domains as its input. You can find this under primitive, um, under the curve tab in primitive. And if we go to rectangle, um, uh, you will just, uh, you will get this component and there you can see different inputs. And here we have an input that is X size. And if you look closely, the icon 
that is set here is not the icon of a number, but it's the icon of a domain. It's this um, horizontal bar with two vertical bars. And we find domains under the math tab in Grasshopper. And all the way on the left, we have our um, domain components. And the first thing that we'll, we'll do is to use the construct domain. Um, so what is a domain? A domain is a special kind of um, value that has not just one number, but it's basically just two numbers. Um, one uh, decides the, the starting value and the other one decides the, um, the, the ending value of our domain. So I will copy my number slider, from, uh, my create point components, and use one number slider as my domain start and the other one as my domain end. I will set the domain start to zero and I will set the domain end to 100. And now I can add this domain as my input to the um, x size. And I will also add it as an input to my y size. And now I've created a rectangle that goes from 0 to 100 in y and that goes from 0 to 100 in x. So this is a, a different way of, of, uh, of defining a, um, a rectangle. Of course, I can also um, go into negative directions. So if I, for example, uh, want to, to do that, I would need to change my number slider. I can double click the number slider um, and set the minimum value, the, the lowest value that I can go to, to minus 100. And if I do this, then you can see now we have created, uh, we basically uh, increased the size of uh, the rectangle. And now it goes from minus 100 in both y and x direction to plus 100 in both x direction. Of course, I can split this up. Right now, um, both the x size and the y size get their um, domain from this one component, but I can also create a second component and um, have different values for the two sizes. And domains are quite important. So we um, use domains quite often because very often we, we, we don't just need a certain value, but we need to constrain um, a certain geometry or we, we, want to, um, we want to have a starting point, a starting value, and an end. Domain basically packages two values into one. Um, so we can use the construct domain component to do that. But there's um, also an easier way or maybe um, something where we don't, if we don't need uh, sliders, if we don't want to change this, we can simply use a panel. And similar to how we um, simply added the values of a point, for example, um, in the panel and use this as an input, we can also just um, add the values of a domain to a panel by double clicking and then going, for example, minus 100 to 100. And if I use this panel as my input to any of these, um, any of the domain inputs of the rectangle, maybe, maybe use something that is uh, different than what we have right now, I will go minus 50 to 50. And now you can see the size of the rectangle. Let me disable the preview of the first rectangle so that it doesn't confuse us. Right click, disable preview. And now you can see that uh, the Y size of our rectangle is set to minus 50 to 50. You can see this right here, minus 50 to plus 50. If I were to go minus 50 to zero, for example, then you can see in the preview, I hope this is um, it's clear, that this goes from minus 50 in y to zero. Um, yeah, so these are the domains. And um, it's quite an important uh, concept to know and to, to work with. If we have a domain, sometimes we also want to go in the other direction. So we can also have a um, component that is called deconstruct domain. So I can select this deconstruct domain and um, add a domain as the input. And now I will get the values for the start and end value. Now, whenever we have any kind of data in Grasshopper, it is quite important that we, we understand what that data is. And here, a panel is also a very important tool. So I can always add a panel and pipe whatever um, data that I want. For example, the start output that I just uh, got from this deconstruct domain component um, into my panel, and there I can see what the value actually is. Uh, same for the ending component, and I can do this with other um, types of output as well. 
So I can also um, add the rectangle output to my panel. And there I can, I will simply have a, uh, yeah, just basically a text preview of what the data is. So I have one rectangle with a width of 200 and a height of um, 50. If you use panels, you should not use them as a, um, basically as a uh, way of, yeah, piping data from one point to the next. So don't do something like this. You shouldn't really um, uh, connect them in line um, and pipe data through them because panels also very subtly, but um, they do change the data in some ways. And it's um, usually not advisable to um, use them in line in such a way. So to quickly recap, um, we've looked at multiple ways of creating geometry. In this case, we only created very, very simple geometry, points and uh, rectangles. Um, and to create points, I used the construct point component and used number sliders, where I set the um, uh, lowest and maximum value by either double clicking the number slider and setting it in this menu, or when creating the number slider, by simply typing the lowest value, the smallest sign, and the highest value um, after that, and get a number slider that goes from its, uh, minimum value to the maximum value. Um, I can use these uh, number sliders as an input to the construct point component. Um, once I've done this, I can uh, copy and paste it, and of course, use these points that are then created as an input to another component. In this case, I created a rectangle that is dependent on the location of uh, these two. We've looked at domains. So some components, for example, rectangles are defined by domains, not just a certain number, but um, basically two values, a starting value and an ending value. And um, we can either construct this domain um, similar to how we constructed a point by using number sliders, or we can directly add uh, the values by setting a panel to yeah, minus two minimum value to the maximum value. Um, we can always deconstruct um, uh, any kind of data and any kind of geometry. For example, if we deconstruct the domain, we get the starting value and the ending value. We can also deconstruct points, for example. So if we were to have a point, we can always deconstruct the point and get um, the, the individual values that we might need for further processing. That's it. In the next video, we will look at a bit, um, yeah, a few other geometries that we can create, construct and deconstruct. And we will also look at transformations, how to change the geometry that we've already